Good morning everyone. In this video we are going to be talking about the 3D TE match optimization. I have uh, no disclosures uh, uh, to discuss with the, uh, with the audience. We are going to talk a little bit on how to display and how to optimize the 3D images that are set for the Philips Epic uh, 7 and the GE BBD E9. I really recommend you to go to this web page. It's part of the University of Toronto, the PyMed site. And there, uh, if you go to the 3D TE, you will be able to actually um, work on the manipulation and optimization on 3D images. The page is uh, for free and anyone can access it anytime. So to start with, um, this specific presentation, uh, the most important part uh, in 3D echo optimization is to understand that this uh, going to be dependent in three main things. Spatial resolution, which is the ability of an ultrasound system to distinguish between two points at a particular depth, and it's going to be dependent into the, la the longitudinal uh, resolution, the lateral resolution, and the line density. Temporal resolution, which is dependent on the frame rate and sector size. Uh, which is going to be dependent on the size of the image. You can have the three of them. If you get too much temporal resolution, you're going to lose a spatial resolution and sector size. If you get too much size, you're going to lose a spatial and temporal resolution. So understanding that, we are going to uh, start with the display and optimization in the Philips Epic 7. So the next step, is going to be to optimize your 2D uh, image. And for that, we are going to start setting the focus. When we set the focus, um, the focal point in the ultrasound plane is the one that is going to provide the highest lateral uh, resolution. We can do that by uh, adjusting the, the focus knob. And then you are going to focus in the structure of interest. In this example, the mitral valve or the left ventricle. The next thing that we need to do is to set the gain. When we are setting the gain, uh, optimal gain settings will display blood as black and tissues of shades of gray. One way to adjust the 2D gain is to set the overall gain using the gain knob on the control panel. The first display that we are going to show is this example, which is a left ventricle transgastric thoracic view. You try to put the left ventricle in the middle, you are going to press the explain function, and this is how the image is going to populate. An image on the left, which is the short axis, and the, the next image on the right is at 90 degrees. Uh, the next mode is the live 3D. So the live 3D acquisition uh, produces a small size 3D volumes, allowing for mid spatial resolution and high temporal resolution, although it might be insufficient to contain an entire structure of interest, for example, a left ventricle or a right ventricle because they are too big. This modality is often used only for 3D image test and to guide the placement of wires. And the live 3D modes uh, uh, like generates a 60 degrees of lateral width and a 30 degrees of elevational width with a height that is equivalent to the 90% of the 2D plane. The next mode is the full volume. So those are different ways of displaying a full volume display. Um, uh, the layout can be the three images where you can see the top image is the 3D generated image and the two bottom images are the 2D generated image, which are called planes of references. You can choose a single picture, like the example on the right, where you are only going to be able to see your 3D image. So the recommendation is you start with the triple setup uh, on the left, and then from there you go to the one, and then you can manipulate your image. This is an example of, um, of uh, displaying full, a full volume display, okay, which will include the four bulbs of the heart. So you start with this image. This is a four chamber view. You're getting a 90 per 90 uh, 3D data set. And from there, what we are going to do, okay, is uh, we are going to change the layout from three to one. Once we have only the 3D image in, in our screen, we are going to press a function which is called reset cropping. And then 
in the previous image, we were only being the posterior part of the heart. So you can see the heart and then now it's going to appear the anterior too. So you're not going to be able because you're only going to be able to see the surface of the heart. But then by tracking down your trackball using the 3D rotate uh, version, you are going to expose the heart from the from the the closest picture to the to the TE probe, and then in this case you are showing uh, the posterior the posterior part of the heart, the anterior part of the heart, and the four valves, including the mitral valve, tricuspid, pulmonic, and aortic valve. The next mode that we are going to display is the 3D zoom uh, with two different layouts. So the first one on the left side is going to be a three pictures layout where you have uh, uh, the first uh, upper uh, image is the 3D data set and the ones that are below it is going to be the one on the left, the, plane, the 2D plane of origin and the one on the right, the 90 degrees perpendicular plane to this image. When you have the anterior and the posterior part, in this case, of the mitral valve. If you select the uh, image that we have on the right, which is the layout with four little icons, um, there you're going to have exactly the same uh, three images that we were having before, but we are adding a fourth plane. This fourth plane is a software generated uh, plane that is seen from the ventricle up into the into the atrium. And in this example, we have the mitral valve and the aortic valve and the anterior and posterior uh, relationship with the heart. If we select the 3D image, how do you want to present this 3D zoom in this example for the mitral valve is an M phase view where the mitral valve is below and the aortic valve is on top. And the other structures can be perfectly recognized, the left atrial appendix, the tricuspid valve, and the pulmonary valve. So here you're going to differentiate the different scallops of the mitral valve. And in the example that we are actually uh, selecting here is a P2 prolapse that can be uh, very well appreciated in this picture. So to be able to determine this, we are going to start with the 3D image, selecting the layout of a single uh, uh, picture. And then here you're going to have the mitral valve and the aortic valve from the side. So the moment that we use the trackball with the 3D rotate function, we bring it down. So the mitral valve is going to be exposed. The next step is going to decrease a little bit the gain. You normally want to have a gain between 45-50%, not to uh, decrease uh, so much uh, the gain because then you are going to under gain and then you are going to see holes where they don't, they don't are. Okay, and that's the image that is going to be generated with the scallops of the mitral valve and the aortic valve in the anterior part. So after decreasing the gain, the next step is you're going to use the rotate set uh, clockwise function. And then is when you're going to be able to position the mitral valve in the end phase view and show this image uh, to your surgeon. Other options uh, when we are selecting the 3D zoom display, it's uh, the function that we call dual volume layout. When you use that, the picture on the left is going to be seen from the atrium. The picture in your right is going to be seen from your ventricle. So now in the next part of uh, our talk, we are going to be talking about the 3D optimization in the Epic Q, not the display now. So to optimize um, the 3D image, again, uh, we actually mentioned it before, you need to uh, adjust your gain. So when you do that, uh, the example that we are showing on the left part of the screen is how you increase your gain. So you don't want to overgain, but then you definitely want to decrease a little bit until you achieve uh, 50 to 45%, and then you can start to see your mitral valve, okay? Again, you don't want to undergain too much because then you can actually start to see holes in the image that they are not there. So compression. So what is compression? Compression optimizes the ratio of lights and darks 
which is like the whites and, uh, and blacks uh, in your fiber optic will be exactly the same thing. OK, it's normally set around like 30 and then you can go up and down and choose to uh, adjust the image to get a better a better quality image. Another thing that we can use is what we call vision. So what is vision? It goes from A to H and by default we start at H. So it can be found in the secondary tactile screen. OK, and it normally goes uh, rotating counterwise on the knob. Each letter has a different shades of colors uh, to, uh, give, uh, to give a sense of uh, depth. H is the most commonly used and is made of a combination of um, brown, which is closer to the screen, yellow, white and blue as it goes farther away from the screen. And um, is 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 a, a a way to actually help you understand help you actually optimize uh, how deep you can actually percept uh, the image. Another feature from the Epic is the use of a chroma map. What is the chroma map? So it's the intensity and combination of the color used uh, to give us a sense of uh, depth uh, changes. The most commonly used is the chroma map uh, two but you have uh, up to seven different planes. But this is the one that most of the people can appreciate better. The brightness is another setting that we need to, uh, that we can actually uh, use in the Epic. And uh, for brightness, we normally start around like 40%. And you can see in this example, uh, when we increase the brightness, you can see like better, better like some structures. But if you over, if you over bright, it's going to be too bright for you. And in the right side of the screen is a decrease in the brightness where you can make the picture a little bit darker to appreciate better the contrast. The next feature that we can use with the Epic is a smoothing. So for that, you need to press on the brightness knob and then you can adjust the smoothing. And it's like uh, like making like smooth smooth the details. A higher smoothing will, uh, will prevent you from appreciate fine details on the image. It goes from zero to six. Okay. So in the next, in this next part, we are going to talk about the GG and the GEBB9, and we are going to start with display and optimization. Okay. So as we did in the Philips uh, with the G, you first need to optimize your two D images. We are going to actually start with the focus here, and to set the focus, the first step uh, again, um, you need to actually use the focal point in the in the ultrasound to provide the highest lateral resolution, okay? The focus is adjusted normally using the focus knob and uh, the, focal, uh, the, the focal point should be actually adjusted to the depth of the structure of interest. When we are setting, um, when we are setting the game, again, you want to have an optimal tissue blood differentiation. And um, you are going to, you, you can change the overall gain uh, by by using the active mode and you will see the characteristics of the surface so once you have set the focus on the structure of interest and set the gain so different modes can be displayed the first one that we we're going we're talking about is the multi-d display this is going to be equivalent to the x plane on the phillips okay so this is a multi-dimension or multi-d mode Okay, and it simultaneously scan uh, and displays uh, two multi like uh, two uh, D planes, which are uh, perpendicular one to the other, and the reference plane is ninety degree to the primary plane. The second mode that we can display with the G is the bir bird's view display. That's an example of a right ventricle bird's view display. It produces a small. Uh, size narrow 3D volume data sets that has high spatial and temporal resolution, but is insufficient to contain a medium or large structure. It's often used, again, equivalent to the live 3D on the Philips, 
um, to test and guide the placement of uh, wires or devices. And the default volume that is generated is uh, 50 degrees for lateral width and 10 degrees for elevation of depth. When we change to a new mode, this is an example of the medium and large volume display. So in this mode, the reference plane shows a line cutting the left ventricle in half, where the 3D image is displayed. And then the yellow arrows uh, will show from where we are looking at the 3D data set in the reference planes. And then if we press clear, we are going to reset the cropping and get a full image like we did with the, with the Epic. So an option that you have when you're using medium and large volume display is to use the laser lines. So here is where we can find uh, the laser lab uh, lines option. And when you do it, you have a white line, which is the reference plane for the, in, a, in this example for the four chamber view, and a green line, which is the perpendicular plane, which will be equivalent to the two chamber view. These lines cannot be moved, but it gives you an, an idea on where your image is positioned in 3D, so you can orient yourself a little bit better. And in this example, we are exposing the four valves of the heart. Another option that G gives us uh, with the medium and large volume is the option of rotate cell. This is exactly the same option that we have with the Epic. And then what you want is to use this to rotate the 3D data set parallel to the screen. So you can, for example, in this example, show the mitral valve in an M-face view. Another option that we can use with the medium and large volume display is the up and down function, which is located in the second page of the panel, which allows you to see the image from the bottom and from the top with only a click. Another option uh, that we can uh, use with the GE is the 4D zoom display. This is equivalent to the 3D zoom in Philips, and the 4D zoom is used for the assessment of individual valves and small structures. It allows, it allows to define a 3D block and orient it automatically to provide an M-phase view of specific structures. It's mostly used for mitral valve, aortic valve, or intraortic septum, intraatrial septum. Uh, you need to press uh, the 4D zoom prepare to actually obtain that picture, and you choose the region of interest to show this picture. Uh, in this example, on the left side, is uh, without color on the right side is with color and both of them are examples of um, both of them are examples of uh, mitral valve in the end phase view so if we want to optimize the ge image we are going to talk about different things we are going to start to talk about 3d gain and you can uh, see here an example how we overgain and how we actually decrease the gain progressively. And this can be used with this no show on the left side of the screen. You can use active mode, which is to highlight the characteristics of the surface and is considered like 3D compression and you have the active mode node to be able to do that as shown in the left side of the screen. You can use the function UD Clarity, uh, which is uh, able to provide a better depth of perception. Uh, by default, it's at one. You can go to zero or to two. When you increase it to two, it enhances the shades and gets a better sense of depth. When you decrease it to zero, is for a smoother, a smoother appearance. You can use depth and color map optimization. The depth and color map, um, it gives you a darker brown close to the cream 
and a darker blue far away to the screen to again get a better uh, impression. There are very different uh, colors uh, that goes from copper blue to gray to map, as you can see in this example. Another option that GE offers us is a stereo vision, but uh, to appreciate this, you need 3D glasses and you will be able to get, like in the cinema, a really 3D image of the, of the matter above, in this case. You can use a smoothness for getting a better uh, smoothing of the image. You can increase it, like we're showing here, or decreasing. There are very subtle changes. You can use gamma, which is the ratio of dark and light shades. And on the left side of the screen is where you can find the knob. And finally, you can use tissue transparency. As you see in this example, you can increase the tissue transparency, making it thinner, or you can decrease it. You don't want to decrease it too much, or you will lose the possibility of appreciated structures. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you very much for listening, and I will be happy to answer your questions.